uh, started and uh, we could see how it's all going. Very, very interesting. And uh, the CAF president promised that this is going to be the best uh, Cup of Nation we'll ever witness. Well, I bet maybe uh, he might be right or he might be wrong, but let's just see, keep our finger crossed and see how it's been going. My name is Lepoema Daniel, and today in the studios, I have one pretty young lady that is a very wonderful sports analyst, uh, Uche Diane. She's here today with me. Uh, you're highly welcome to ABS Post Plus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. And um, I guess you've been following up the African Cup of Nations. It's the, it's the most important thing happening in Africa right now. So yes. not following it would, like, would be like you're not in an African continent. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, we have some uh, stories, just uh, some of the football stories, uh, you know, coming up from uh, Super Eagles and um, uh, some of the foreign uh, and the foreign scenes, some of the uh, sports stories from these uh, foreign scenes. All right, let's fire the first shot. NFF agrees that Wardrum, the Super Falcon coach, to continue as a female uh, head coach. There has been a lot of uh, issues, controversies after the uh, World Cup that happened in uh, August, September period, and uh, this man left. But uh, people have been clamoring. Since the Super Falcon have been doing well under him, uh, they needed to review and uh, review his contract and bring him back. And sometimes some people from other quarters were like, no, this man had an uh, issue. He went public to tell the world that um, he's been owed and uh, some of all those kind of stuff. But now I think the NFF has agreed to bring him up for him to continue the good work he's doing. What's your take on this? Well, um, first of all, he's not the person that took our issues to the world, I would say. Mm. The issues were there already. When it comes to the Super Falcons, I think they fight more, both on the pitch and off the, off pitch, the pitch, than any other Nigerian team you might have right now. Mm. Because it's still because of them, they were paid right there. The secretary herself went to pay them right there in the World Cup dressing room because mm. they didn't want to hear the same stories. But I, I guess, I, I thought they, they, they refuted that claim that nothing like that uh, happened. Well, the video is circulating. You can't refute something that we saw That has a video? Yes. You know, okay. once, once it's there, it's there. It's there. You, you cannot really tell the whole world that this did not happen. It's there. So whether you refute it or not, at somehow FIFA knows this is happening. So we have to deal with you directly. Now, the Super Falcons have not hidden the fact every time they are being paid and owed. I don't know why, but it seems they don't hide it. They always try to fight for it and clamor for it. So now, talking about wardrobe, he's not like Pestero that is willing to just take a pay cut or just remain there simply because I want to coach somebody. He's having a wonderful record so far. Mm. He had a good record before he came for the Super Falcons, and he's maintaining that. And, and he's he still coaching a, a, a club side. Well, now he's back. He's definitely not going to be coaching a club mm. side, obviously. Mm. But it shows that this man, he knows what he deserves. And he's fighting for it. And he's saying, I don't want to be old. Ghana Troy is still being old. And we're talking about even paying him off still last year. Mm. You understand? So this man is trying to say, I won't let you do the same to me. If you're not willing to do business, don't involve And also me. interfering in, in, his, uh, yes. in the list you know, of players, a couple of players. I, I feel he's just trying to show us what we already know in Nigeria. Mm. Let coaches do their job. Don't interfere. Don't do this. We saw Pesero coming out to say um, just recently that uh, one of the goalkeepers was recommended, was introduced. But, but, is, it wrong, but is it wrong for a, for a player to be recommended to a coach? Oh, no, but I feel you should have... But, what, but I, I think the, the difference be, should be... The difference there should be imposing. I, yeah, yeah, imposing. imposing. I feel if, if something goes wrong, it should hmm. be your responsibility. Not hmm. coming out to tell us, oh, this went wrong because it's not my choice. Hmm. Do you understand me? Hmm. If I am a coach and I pick a lineup, it doesn't concern the world how these people got into the team. If for any reason they don't perform well, you sh I should be the one to come out to say, oh, this player didn't do well here. I, I, I own up to this mistake. Maybe I felt something. Or, or you just cover it. Or don't come out and tell the world. I was recommended to me. Oh, no, I didn't pick it. Uh, my, my hand, no, I the wasn't team. the one that I picked them. I wasn't the one that picked them. Mm. 
Uh -huh. Do you know how that sounds? It sounds like you're just there as a child or a as puppet. A, a puppet. Yes, you're yeah. just there acting up. So now I really like Wardrum. He has been doing an amazing job so far. He bonds well with the Super Falcons and they do well under him. And so he makes just, a lot of uh, discoveries of new players. The truth and, is um, that if you want something, you pay for it. Mm -hmm. If it is a person, you pay the person for their availability and their expertise as well. Mm. So it's that simple. Pesoro might be willing to take whatever pay cuts or willing to be owed. <laughs> Everybody is not the same. Wardrobe knows his value. Mm. And so far, when you're watching a Super Falcons game, I know what everybody is expecting, that they will win. That's the number one thing on your mind. You don't want to think, oh, they might lose. And even when they lose, you see that they fought hard and yes. well enough for it. Okay. So that's just it. All right. All right, we're still talking sports, talking about Wardrobe. Uh, the American coach whom NFL have agreed that Wardrum will continue. Randy Wardrum will continue as the Super Falcon coach uh, to take the Super Falcon to the next level. All right, let's move forward. Coach Pesero now have a full contingent of players as Terra Murphy lands in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, when uh, Bonife, Victor Boniface had an injury, uh, they needed a very um, more um, firepowers to replace him and uh, Terry Murphy who has been doing good in the French League was drafted immediately to be part of the team and uh, he played for the team. The team, the, the, the team coach had to appeal that this guy would play on Saturday then now join the national team. Terry Murphy in Super Eagles uh, camp in the Côte d'Ivoire uh, how do you look at it? Is he a welcome uh, development, or <laughs> let's look at the he let's look at let's look at it. And Ian Achotu is back to full training because he came back with an injury. Yeah, yeah, there was and, an injury scare. Yeah, yes. so now he's back there. These two guys are there, and uh, you know they weren't part of the Ian Acho is in the camp, but he wasn't part of the Equatorial Guinea um, saga. I, I wanted, to, I just have to call it a saga because it looks so. Surprising that surprising surprising that we couldn't <laughs> with, oh, a, with a star studded team. I, I wasn't we couldn't surprised at all. Around I wasn't surprised at all. And it was, no, I wasn't surprised because <laughs> I couldn't imagine me looking at Oshime firing gay, um, shots off. It wasn't something to write home all about. Well, but what's your take on this? Let's start from there. Okay, um, first of all, talking about Murphy himself. Mm. It's not like we have a choice. <laughs> mm. Whether you want to accept him or not, he's going to play. Mm. He's in the squad. You just have to deal with it. That's mm. it. Knowing that your number one is not there, you just, you know, that's, that's the thing about making plans that don't work out in the end. Mm. There should always be a backup plan. Mm. And if he's the backup, the backup plan, I need him to show at least half of what Yusuf did on the pitch uh, against Equatorial Guinea. He is the only player I could, I could beat my chest and say, yes, this is, a, this is a super ego. Because Yusuf really came true. And most of us were not expecting that. For someone that is replacing Ndidi, I, I was really surprised. I but he's not, was, new, he's, not a, he's not new to no, the, he's to not, the team. No, he's not new he's to, not the new the to the team. He's not new to the team. Mm. But how many times have you seen him play like that? Like that particular no, way? He, has been, he went so, so high. Like, uh, if people were even scared. But he was injury. watching with uh, Iwobi. Two of them were there when no, they No, I when don't want scored. to talk about Iwobi because I saw it a very, very, as in I was so disappointed. Yeah, I, yeah, no. I, I think it I'm just... Very, it was disappointing a very, is, ah, is a very... It's a very, it's a very, a very low term. term. Yes. yes, I don't want to say more than it that was, on TV because it's... It's, it's, it's just happening. Yeah, definitely. I was heartbroken. I don't know what to say. I, when I just call his name, it's just his performance that comes to my head. <laughs> Every other thing so far has been erased for now. Just that performance is in my head because it was so disappointing. Yusuf, yes, I think he tried to redeem himself knowing the mistake. You know, there's this thing about mistakes. When you make that mistake on the pitch, you try to do something else. I'm not going to lie, Yusuf tried to redeem himself. We we're talking about Osimen. I, I don't know what happened. But they did not play like a team. Even the individual brilliance we used to see, we did not see it that day. Osimhen should have scored at least two goals. Yes. At least. My, even, not even the one he scored. That one looked like it just, oh, finally, something is going to happen and I'm in the right place. He had other chances aside that to score at least two more goals. Mm -hmm. And then and one very, very clear chance. 
and we saw something else happen. I don't know what I would say went wrong. If it was Napoli, I don't know whether he would have missed that. Mm. People are saying for as excuse that the weather was part of it. No, it has nothing to do with the weather. You were playing under this weather before you went. Yes. Home, and you played for many years here. And you even you went, went to there. Dubai because in Dubai it has the same the same uh, and uh, you still went weather. There. And you trained you in came. Dubai. Yeah, you, that's what you I'm saying. Camped there. So we can nobody should bring in weather, weather to into this. this because uh, this is just our error. It just people just um, now you are, misusing I don't even opportunities. Know, I, this case, this is I think I think one of the problems there is that they played under the pressure, as if there was this pressure on them. They really didn't play as a compact team. But I know some individuals there who tried their their best there. There's some people who, are, who still need to say yes, they, tried they tried on the average. On the average. People like uh, Ola, you know, Ola, he did well. He's always he on did board. very yes, well always. there. I will yes. appreciate. I uh, really need to appreciate him. Then most of the time, it's going forward, coming, coming back, back is always the you issue. You know, our strength was supposed to be that attack. The so midfield. No, no, no. We didn't see, see anything see, from the attack at all. We, the we still need to. Itself. But the problem with Super Eagles is we've not gotten a creative midfielder. And we have the defense. And in the, the himself that was supposed to help out is not there. Yes. Because he has that idea. No, no, he's, he's, a, he's an offensive player. Yes, he's, he's decision making is that the new coach Enzo, Enzo, Enzo has changed him now to a supporter. I think indeed he's attacker. someone that can, as long as he's that midfield, he mm. has his place there. We he's need both a creative ten. and also can play in other parts of Good, the midfield. Good, but we need Now, not ten. being there, it really took us. We, we, you know, this opportunity is being given to you, will be. But we've not seen this creativity. I don't want this to creativity. Mentioning his in name alone. I think they should draft in Ihan Acho there. He was in the middle. To, he should be in the middle. I think Ihan Acho. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting him in this second match against yeah, Ivory, Coast, Ivory Coast. And I'm expecting a, a better result. Though it really hurts that it has to be Ivory Coast that you are now expecting the better result because this one seems like they have their thing going already. Yes. They have a team. You know, it's one thing to be full of superstars, another thing to play against a team that knows themselves. It and that's exactly matter. what happened to we, us against Equatorial Guinea. That is exactly what happened. Uh, they came out well and... Um, Egypt saw the same thing against Mozambique. Mozambique, yes. Ghana they saw the believe. same thing against Cape Verde. Yes. These people are not playing because they, they, they are screaming to show you that we have a team. We didn't mm, come they don't come here to stage. look at your jersey to hear uh, this is Oshime. Oh, and this is uh, and, 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 so, and he plays in Napoli. In this Nap one plays in uh, Asma and stuff. No, 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 no. Nobody cares That's not what football is all about now. And especially African football. You know, yes. there's this African initiative that when you meet somebody that everybody's talking about, you want to show him that you can do you better. You can do better. And that's we don't exactly... Do, we don't do, oh, he's a superstar. Oh, mm. let, me, let me bow. No, no, no. You're going to show you, a oh, guy can do what you're doing. Exactly. That's the thing about Africa. That aggression is always there. So when you're playing against them, don't go out and play, oh, it's what we used to do. Let me just walk in and continue. I didn't really see... Then let's, look at, our, let's look at our at five and six. Uh, let's look at... Um, the West Brom guy and the uh, Truce Econ, who was there, uh, did they really perform well? Truce Econ, I would say, I, I think he was a little bit average or somehow because mm. he really showed up a little bit. You, he's like he's one of the people in the team. You say yes, I, I noticed this person in the team. Mm. You understand? So um, he's always been doing well for the Super Eagles. He's always been showing up. Um, I think I'm very much impressed. Um, Semi Ajayi? Semi Ajayi, not really. I'm not going to say I was exceptionally so impressed with him. But he did, he, he, I, to me, I would say on the contrary that Semi Ajayi did a lot of job more than Truth Econ. Oh, yeah, he did. But so many jobs. Econ is Conver mostly defense. Covered a lot of jobs for Econ. He, he did, actually. Because and it, that was when it looks as if the pressure was much because uh, at times echo this is out of place. This, this, this pressure you're no, talking they about. Allowed, Without the pressure, what are you coming to play for? No, People you are expecting what I'm saying. you to win already. It allowed the Equatorial Guinea to mount pressure on them. And they were yeah. in charge when we started this game. They were in charge. That's the problem. Equatorial Guinea will mount pressure on you. What? You are going to play Ivory Coast that will mount even bigger pressure. Mm. So whatever pressure you're getting from Equatorial Guinea, you, get you ready, have to get ready. ready for it. You didn't come here to play. This is not club football. This is not a walkover Whatever thing. pressure you think you're getting, deal with it. Because you came, you, you came here to win a continental cup. Exactly. With people that are as strong as, as you, you are. are. Aggressive as you are. Not even the North Africans will take it easy on you. Exactly. So if you had Egypt 
in your group, you will tell me they were mounting pressure or what? Mm. You're going to play Ivory Coast on Thursday. Are you going to tell me that they were mounting pressure and you no, didn't know no, what no. to you do? Have to prepare. It doesn't matter about the pressure. pressure. My own problem is how do you deal with it? Mm. No, but everybody goes through pressure somehow. It's how you deal with it and what you give. To be honest, if, okay, imagine it was the Super Falcons that had to play against England. I'm telling you, what will be in your mind is they can still win England. Mm. It's not going to be what you saw against the Equatorial Guinea uh, team that day. It's not what we expected. So okay. for me, I don't feel it's about the pressure. Okay. I just want to see a team play. That's where Pesero comes in. You have players that are not really coordinated. As a manager, it's your job to coordinate them. And I'm not seeing that from him. I just don't know whether I would put the entire blame on him, but I cannot take out the players as well because they have done their part to, be, to bring a very, very disappointing um, scoreline. Okay. All right, we're still talking sports on ABS Sports Splash this morning. Super Eagles assistant coach Finidi George says Senegal have all it takes to win the AFCON. Uh, do you agree with him? They have all it takes, yes. And they're defending champions. That's why they have all it takes. All it takes to win it. You know, once you've tasted something... And like, just yesterday, they trashed Gambia three goals to nail. Well, as defending champions, you're not supposed to allow somebody to just take your, your, your glory just like that. Yes. I think they are the only ones so far that have given that... That distance, that um, that particular scoreline, everybody's expecting Betting. to see. Okay. So now they've they've raised the bar high. All right. Expect a very good game from Super Eagles against Cote d'Ivoire. Says Babangida. Are uh, you uh, with him on this ideology? So, so far, mm. <laughs> I'm not really with him on this one. Why? From the qualification stage. So even this first match, I've mm. not been impressed. Okay. I've never, I've, I think so, f I have not stopped saying, in, in, as in since Pesero came in at least, mm. that I'm not impressed. Mm. So I'm not going to suddenly be expecting too much against So Ivy what Coast. do you think is going to be the scoreline against uh, Ivory Coast? I'm not going to come here to start trashing my own country. <laughs> no, but let's, see. let's check. Yeah, I want gonna... Nigeria to win. As okay. a Nigerian, yes. as a Nigerian, I want Nigeria to win. Okay. In my mind, I know what I'm thinking. So I'm so just, just going to say it now. It. What do you I'm think? Not going to say it what now. do you think will be yes, the scoreline? There's a reason why it's in my mind. <laughs> what, what is it? No, no, no. Just stay. Just stay. What do you think will be the scoreline? If we are not careful, mm. it might be another draw. It might be another draw. If we are not careful, it mm. might be another draw, or even we lose. I mean, <laughs> so imagine not, playing what you just did. You don't see us. You not see us winning. It's not. I don't ball. see you. Mm. I want to see you improve first. Okay. You know. And we can improve in the game. That's what I'm saying. If there is improvement in this game, mm. automatically, yes, I because we find it very tough. I mean, we beat Egypt the last time mm. in a group stage. Mm. It's possible we can do it with Ivory Coast this time. And I, it, whether you are the host or whoever doesn't matter. Mm. But if there there is no improvement, if they decide that they will still continue as they just played against Equatorial Guinea, mm. that they played a draw. I mean, come on, if you saw that a performance and you see Ivory Coast, do you feel that if they play the same thing, they would win? That's the truth. Okay. Unless they improve. So Ex that's except like, there is an improvement yes. in the game. Yes. And then uh, we could have our fingers crossed. Maybe we'll come out with a draw <laughs> or we defeat I mean, the court. The I mean, imagine you're in someone's home. Mm. and you're playing a game with them, you mm. automatically have to up your game because... It's, it's a lot of factors ahead. will be working against you. Exactly. You don't uh, go to someone's fans house to will be, be fans and everything. So yes. I, I really want them to up their game. Whatever they have to do from now to Thursday, mm. they should do it. Okay. If it is training, if it is skills, if it is motivation, they were already promised... But the president has already motivated yes, them. Yes, like now, for this match... When he's in who sum of money, all the outstanding And they have bonuses. Bills, that now, the for bonuses, every, match, every match... Every match they win is $5,000. Yes. Now, for a draw, it's 2500 I mean, that's enough motivation. Yes. At least, I'm really... So the ball really, is in their court, I'm impressed too. They, they got to that part. Mm. So now you have 2005 Don't you want to make 5000 at least? Okay. All right, we're still on uh, ABS Sports. Uh, Samia Jai said they know what to do to improve. That's coming from a defender that played the Equatoria Guinea game. So what it means, in essence, is, or it's trying to tell us that the bulk of the blame goes to them, not even the coach. He said, we know what to do to improve. So it means there is something 
the players are not doing right in the team. Your take? I absolutely, I mean, I accept and I support him on this claim. Mm. I am someone who has been, well, anywhere I go, I'm drumming Pesero's name, how much I am disappointed. Mm. But, you know, there are factors. That's why they say people change. Mm. There are things that show you whether your decision is good or not, if you're a smart person or a wise person or somebody willing to learn. Yes, I've been putting a lot of blame on Pesero, but recently I've given him a little bit of break. Mm. I've given him some break. Because I'm not seeing anything from the people I'm even defending. Hmm. Do you understand? In what aspect? I'm not seeing that ginger. I don't know. I don't know what to call like it. Like all of a sudden, you see, you will be walking in the yes. walking in inside the f uh, field of play. I'm where, not. I know. You know. You know when you are defending somebody, this person can do this. This person can do that. And then the person is not showing you that. Oh, they are serious about it. Hmm. I don't know how to explain it. That's what I've been seeing so far. I don't know if they feel we don't want to hurt ourselves for our clubs when we go back. We don't want to get another injury because injury has been a lot of problems right now, not just for the Nigerian team, but for other teams as well. And now you see some kind of um, unseriousness. I don't know why, but I don't think somebody that is not a superstar like them will be playing like that to some extent. Mm. Now, let's say, for example, let's say we don't have up to six of our superstars. Mm. Let's say we had more home-based players that really want to be noticed or picked up. Mm. Do you think they will still be playing like that? No. Don't you see there's already a difference? Mm. When you want to show that you are good enough, not that I am already good enough, mm. I feel that is the factor that is not there. And I don't know if Pesero is the kind of money that I can instill that. With Ganetro, you could see it a little bit. I think Ganetro is more of a disciplinarian. If I don't see this from you, that's it. If I don't see you in the qualification, you are not going to play the main match. That is what I got from Ganetro. Even though, yes, he had his own problems, but it was not this bad. They were not this bad. Now... So you are, are, you, are you trying to say that uh, uh, Pesero looks as if he pampers them a lot? I'm so sorry, More of but being the uh, disciplinarian and uh, it's not about putting his feet, them. No, putting it's, his it's feet not on even the, about the pampering ground. them. Sorry mm. to say, I don't think Pesero is the best coach, or even, in fact, I mean, check his record before coming into the, the Super Eagles team. Mm. What exactly would you say he has done that is exceptional? Now we all know that if you are coming into the Super Eagles team, money problems. So you have to be ready to take certain pay cuts. Mm. You have to be ready to be old at least for some time. Mm. This is normal now. So, will you want to get a coach that knows his value, that knows he does, you don't want him to be old? He doesn't want to be old. He's not that kind of coach you can get. Let's say you, you, you are going for Javi Rena. Mm. He took Zambia there. And he, and he used Saudi Arabia to beat Argentina. That man is exceptional. You can't owe him. You can't give him a pay cut because he knows who he is. Mm. Do you understand me? Mm. Now, when you bring a certain coach... You know this person, you know where his level is. You know what he can do for you, and you know how you can pay him or whatever you want to do with him. Mm. And I think that is who Pesero is. Okay. He is the coach that, I just want this job. I, I feel he just wants this job. He wants to prove a point or something. Unlike Randy Waldrum that already knows, I am this good, and I won't let this happen. Mm. Pesero is like the opposite. So I feel because that excess confidence is not there or something, that's why it's also affecting the players as well. Okay. All right. Um, Joe Pesero must um, improve the... Uh, he has to do his part. His own he part. Just has to do and his also part. instill a thorough discipline uh, in the or team. Or at least motivation, at uh, least. Motivation. That's discipline, motivation. I wonder all what he together. says in the dressing room. That but maybe that's... We, we must always understand that. And... Put, feed in play, you have 25 players. Put in players that are ready to play. Put in players that are ready to, you know, sacrifice themselves in the field of play. To say, man, we must get these things right. These are what we should, uh, uh, the kind you of players. can't kill himself. Should, you need someone that would feed. You need someone that you know, would do things in the... You they gave him, no, no, no. Last time, at least two passes that came from Iwobi from uh, four to him. He didn't make use of it. He didn't utilize them properly. Well, so, uh, yes, he did Then not. another person is Ademola Lukman. 
Yes, he gave an assist, but he was nowhere to be found. Then Simon, uh, Simon he was, was, he was, was one also of the, a writer. He was, one, he was the first name I actually mentioned watching the match. Before halftime, I said, look, man, I, I don't understand. Then Simon, you are talking about Lukman. Did you Simon see Simon? Moses. Now, these are Simon things you was, should have was, seen on time. Simon but was a total even writer. Even when Chukwueze came in, I feel Chukwueze wasn't even given enough time. And he was not placed in a, in in, a rightful place. In the play. rightful position. Uh, yes. Because I be was flexible. surprised when I, saw his, when I saw his position. I was like, this is not Chuk, This is not normal for Chukwueze. Maybe they have tried this in training. Because these are things we are watching. We don't know what is happening. I know he likes playing from the right angle because he's a, le a left footer. But um, a lot needs to be, the, 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 the tactics need to be flexible more. If it's not working here, it's, you, you change. can change to the other side. You change. It has to be flexible. That's what I'm saying. You know? They know what to do. There are mm. improvements to be made. So that's if what Semi said. They exactly, know what to do. They know to what improve. to do. If they, do, if they make those improvements before Thursday, I don't think Ivory Coast would... would, would, would it would be a threat. Yes. I don't think there will be much of a threat. It will be a balanced game. But if okay. they don't... Mm. I don't know what, what will happen. All right, um, we wish Super Eagles a very uh, wonderful play time against Cote d'Ivoire. We pray we'll get a three points there. Uh, what's come to worst? No worst. We have to get three points. <laughs> you have to. To stay alive. If you want to remain in the game. Yeah, to remain there in the tournament. We need to get that three points. And it's very, very vital. So they need to throw in everything they have, uh, you know, convert everybody to be scorer. Everybody needs to score. Nobody... Uh, it's Oshima. Nobody is um, a defender. They must it, call. The team is, but they the must team be is very not wise. supposed to be built around one person Yes, alone. they must be very, very wise yes. not to concede early, and that will be their funeral. Well, we pray that God will see them through Amen. if they do the right thing. Amen. All right. Okay, away from uh, Super Eagles, let's just look at uh, Everton and uh, Nottingham Forest has been charged for financial uh, fair play conduct. And this is coming the... Uh, English, the Premier League have charged them because they overshoot their, uh, overshoot their budget. And that has caused them, you know that uh, FIFA sanctioned uh, Everton, they took away 10, 10 points, points, and now Forest has found themselves in it. I don't know how many points they're going to take away from Forest, who is already battling uh, not to be relegated. So if they take 10, 10 points away from them, they're already in the relegation zone. So, um, is that not a very eye-opener to other clubs to pick up a lesson from it and learn to energize your feeder teams? Because this is where it comes from. Whenever you want to just go buy already made play, and you have feeder teams, you need to go those feeder teams. You need to make them, you need to give them that confidence like Asna Wenga used to do those days. Yeah. You need to build them. You need he, to put in this about I was that. shocked when Everton was caught in this because Everton used to have a youth system that was almost the best of the best then. Well, yes, it's an eye opener. It, um, it's really. I don't know. I don't know how they. Why? I don't want to say why, but how they keep breaking these rules when the rules are there already. But at the same time. <laughs> If you're going to talk about one club, mm. you need to talk about the others. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. This has to be uh, the Premier League this has to stamp time. in there. This is uh. the second time the Premier League is charging Everton. Mm, yes. The second time in a season. The season. And they are not the first. Man City has been there. Why have you not done anything about Man City so far? You, we, you, I think they really need to answer that question because mm. I'm so sorry, but it's like very open. Will I call it, is it favoritism or is it just... No, it's not favoritism. Or is it just Maybe, plain, You know, it took plain, time. It took time, like now. It took time, but Arsenal, this was their own. It's Arsenal, open. Chelsea it's, it's, it's are all open. under investigation. Okay. Yes, those ones are still under investigation. Now, and uh, you know there's not going to be any uh, escape. Uh, there's going to be a escape. Uh, uh, how do they put it? Nobody is going to. We keep on hearing 100 and something charges. Yes. Man City, 100 and something charges. Now, it's taking you years. But that's how, no, listen, that is how it takes the English people and to, take, now, to not do even their investigation. One. No, they are, they, are, they are coming out. 
Nobody knew that for us. See, that's the thing. Yes. No, 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 no. I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not supporting Everton's um, 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 misuse. Okay. I'm not supporting it in any way. No. I'm just saying, if you get to do this, please extend the same hand to others. Mm. Big be, or small. Let all the 20 club investigators and them. Um, I don't want a situation whereby. We are seeing time for his deduction now. Everton is fighting it, trying to get themselves out of the relegation, and now we are seeing another that point deduction about to take place. Mm. When the time comes for Man City, I don't know whether they will still be in the Premier League. Me <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, one, another thing is because that... Because you know, you obviously, know that it's more than 10 points. Let, let's look at Forest. Forest bought, changed the whole team. Team. Almost the whole 22 team. 22 players. players. They changed 22 players. Everything. Everything that came from... Since they came into the Premier League, the Premier just League. to remind their team the relegation. They changed their coach. They changed everything. They now bought extra players. So definitely, they would break that financial play rule. You know, no, and, no. Uh, Don't get me wrong. I'm mm. not... They need to because this is the Premier League. Mm. When you come into somewhere, you ask them, how do they do things? Yes. You don't just No, they, know, they all know. Anybody you, in the football... Then why are you doing some, it if uh, you know that it's it. wrong? No, that but is one is it. you don't even have the money to fight this thing. Mm. You don't have that kind of amount of money. Now, let's say you actually did because they have some very, really, really um, uh, wealthy investors that brought out the money. Yes, we want to show that we've come into the Premier League after so, so many... Uh, yes. Like you don't break rules to stamp your name. You're only going to do it in the wrong way you should have done it in the right way okay. you don't need to change 22 players and you're still even fighting relegation mm -hmm. your problem should have been 22 players not even 11. not even 11. <laughs> not even they just come and say oga there is a player there's that a player say, bring, bring him, him. <laughs> <laughs> oga, say, coach, uh, bring him there's, there's this boy you i know? think he's good bring him yes just Any country, you just Anywhere. want to. In you fact, want I, to. I feel the. the I Maybe feel he was just trying to rub shoulders. No, with I think the they did this force. thing. You know this thing whereby you're walking on the streets and like this in the street, you see workers needed. Mm. That's what Nottingham Forest must have done. Players needed in the Premier League. Well, apply uh, within. That, that should be an eye opener to other clubs and uh, other team uh, clubs. That Definitely, are, are especially GT. when you are not. That uh, you have to abide to rules and regulations so that it doesn't this. affect your chances. Of staying in the Premiership. All right, the last of our story today is uh, the latest one that just happened on Monday. Uh, Lionel Messi is the first man to win the Best FIFA Player Men's Award three times after beating off Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland and others. Messi, 36 years old, still firing in Inter Miami and now. He is in the best FIFA, uh, uh, best 11, and he is the winner. This is the third time. He won 2019, he won 2022, and now 2023, 20, uh, he still won the award. Well, what um, does it tell you about this man? <laughs> that Messi is just an alien who just came to change the face of football. Well, I think this is kind of um, subjective, mm. uh, I would say, sort of. Um, congrats to him. FIFA found him worthy. FIFA found him worthy of um, mm. the... The award. The award. So mm. they decided to give it to and him. In the, if, and in the first uh, the 11 players FIFA chose, um, Cristiano Ronaldo was not in the team. Is it because he's in the Saudi league? Well, if you check very well, you would notice that Ballon d'Or, mm. FIFA, whatever word best they've been given, they don't recognize people outside Europe. Mm. I don't know. Everybody mm. knows this now, okay. unless you choose not to acknowledge it. But that is the truth. It doesn't matter whether you are, even, even if you are playing people, dragons, mm in another continent, as long as it's not in Europe, they don't really recognize you. Mm. So that's actually something that made me, the, the, when I finally realized this, I sort of, should I say I lost sort of... Um, Concern. Yes. Whatever credibility they are giving anybody. Mm. Unless it's playing to my advantage, maybe, because mm. come on, 
you would still support your own sometimes. And that is where it comes to Osimen. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Osimen is not awesome. He is. He, very, deserves, very awesome. he yeah. deserves whatever he got. He deserves it fair and square. Mm. But in the long run, if you are considering the entire world and you are not looking in one continent, some of these people will not be winning these awards. Mm. That is the truth. But I'm now, not, I'm not he has won the award. Maybe That's what I'm saying. We... They deemed him worthy to win it this mm. year. Mm. Well, um, some but might this was say... the last year's thing and they gave it to him this year. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I, I, it's, it's for them. Mm. They know why they want to give it to him. Why they have given it to and him. Why, yeah, exactly, why they've given it to him. Maybe okay. if they would also, if, maybe they will even try to break this, their rules of uh, uh, only European based, Europe based players. Okay. I don't know, but um, Messi has always been an awesome player. He's one of, he's one of the players that has changed the entire face of football. Okay. For this particular this decade. Generation this generation. This generation. Yeah. This is someone that his name will go on for generations to come. Exactly. Just like we've been hearing Pele. And I'm sure children after children after children, generations to come will still hear their names. But at the same time, sometimes it's good to, should I say, properly check stats or recognize others. Mm. But at the same time, it's their award. Whatever they put together, it's up to them to go on with it. All right. Thank you very much. I think this is where we'll be drawing the cutting close on uh, ABS Post Black because of time. Uh, remember that every Tuesday uh, we come on board to give you some of the happenings in the world of football. Uh, this is where we'll end it. My name is Telekwe Medani. Daniel, thank you for being part of this uh, program this morning. Uh, well, no problem. I am Uchin Nadayana Onubo. Goodbye for now. Bye.